and welcome to the latest update on Siebel CRM updates brought to you by Black Sheep IT Consulting and the Siebel Hub, your number one resource for always up-to-date Siebel CRM training. The Siebel CRM 22.11 update is jam-packed with features and enhancements, so let's dive in. The REST API continues to be a focus area for the Siebel engineers. In the November 22 release, Oracle adds support for Open API 3.0 for service descriptions in inbound REST APIs. In the test automation realm, we now find support to run multiple test executions in parallel on a single machine, along with the ability to send requests to the Siebel inbound REST API from steps in a test script. Product administrators can rejoice. A new responsibility bestows the bearer with super user powers to unlock versioned objects that have been locked by another user. Other interesting enhancements in 22.11 include the enforcement of using an integration workspace other than main as the parent for the optional repository upgrade utility and the disablement of personalization and runtime events for automated SIEBDEV CLI executions. Open API 3.0 is the quasi-standard for RESTful service descriptions. After adding the capability to consume Open API 3.0 descriptions for the web service wizard in 22.9, Oracle has now added support for the same standard when getting descriptions for the inbound REST APIs, such as business object data, business services, workflows, or repository objects. To get the descriptions, simply use the slash describe parameter as usual. Siebel 22.11 and higher will return an open API 3.0 description by default. If you wish to obtain the prior Swagger 2.0 format, you now have to add a query parameter named open API version with a value of 2. Siebel test automation was greatly enhanced with the inauguration of Innovation Pack 2017 and received various updates over the past five years. With 22.11, Oracle adds two new features. The ability to run multiple test executions in parallel on a single DISA client has a major impact on the number of machines and time required for batch testing. The Siebel Test Execution plugin for Jenkins and DISA now support a new parameter to specify the number of scheduled test execution records to fetch and execute. In addition, test administrators can now add steps to test scripts that invoke the Siebel Inbound REST API. This can be handy to retrieve and verify test data, load and delete records used during tests, or simply test the Siebel Inbound REST API itself. The new keyword Invoke REST is added by the repository upgrade utility and supports all features of the Siebel Inbound REST API such as business object data, business services, etc. The response data can be verified and used to populate variables. When a product authoring user is unavailable or has left the organization, any records that they have locked under their Siebel user account can cause issues and delays because they can only be unlocked by the user who locked them in the first place. This is the case in Siebel CRM versions prior to 22.11. With the new Product Authoring Super User responsibility, we can now designate Siebel users who can unlock and administer versioned object definitions VOD, in the product administration area, such as product definitions, classes, attributes, and so forth. The new Superpower responsibility also works for external users who, for instance, are used to authenticate external requests for product data import. When running an update from a prior release of IP17 and higher to the latest release, customers have the option to run the repository upgrade utility. This optional step in the update process imports schema changes, repository object definitions, and seed data to support non-mandatory features. In the past, the utility did not enforce setting a parent integration workspace to import the repository portion. The default parent, also was main, resulting in a branch right below the main branch, which could lead to difficult situations for testing and merging the changes applied by the repository upgrade. In 22.11 and higher, the parent workspace parameter, minus 9, is now required and it does not allow a value of main, 
essentially enforcing the use of a custom integration workspace branch. This makes it easier to isolate the changes for testing and merging into the main branch. The aforementioned repository upgrade utility and the mandatory post-install database update utility generate command line requests for CBDEV CLI, the headless Siebel tools variant. This utility, like the CBDEV executable that drives Siebel tools, reads a configuration file. When CBDEV CLI is run by repository upgrade or post-install database update, the configuration files are generated automatically. In recent versions, the parameters to enable personalization and runtime events are set to false. This ensures that these automation tools do not interfere with the execution of the Siebel tools functionality. If you use CBDEV CLI with a custom configuration file, you might want to apply these settings as well. Let's review the mandatory and optional steps for a successful update to the latest Siebel release. First, it's highly recommended to make a backup of the entire environment and the database that you're intending to update. Then the modular deployment engine, MDE, needs to be run. It'll lay down the new files to disk. If your Siebel version is 21.1 or older, you'll also get a topology update to the MDE's unified directory structure. This applies to any enterprise server component such as AI, Siebel server, or gateway. It's also mandatory to run the post-install database update, which can be run automatically as part of the MDE or manually after the MDE is finished copying the binaries. This has to be executed once per database and applies schema changes and import seed data and open UI manifest data into the target database. Make sure to check the post install db update HTML report and the log files and rerun in case of errors before you continue. There are also optional steps which might or might not be applicable to your situation. The repository upgrade utility is optional. It can be run only against a development database. It should be run only if you intend to uptake the so called non mandatory changes made by Oracle. The repository upgrade utility will import schema changes, import seed data, and open UI manifest data, as well as create a developer workspace under an integration workspace named int underscore Siebel underscore update. In this developer workspace, the repository upgrade utility imports the repository artifacts. Developers can then inspect and test the Oracle manufactured objects and subsequently deliver them into your main branch or your any integration branch. The release notes contain configuration instructions which you might have to apply in your development environment if necessary. There are known issues reported in the release notes as well, so make sure you understand and apply the workarounds if necessary. And finally, there's a bunch of non-repository administrative changes which you might have to take care of. The complete update process with all required and optional steps in green and gray respectively is depicted on the diagram. Here we can see the update process for development environments where the fast track to a successful update is as follows. Take a backup, run the MDE, run the post install database update. If you have no repository upgrades, configuration instructions or administrative changes to implement, you're done. If you need to execute the non-mandatory repository upgrade or apply configuration instructions, you have to do that in the development environment and test and deliver these changes. If you have any administrative changes on your to-do list, you have to implement them as well before declaring success. The same is true for test or production, also known as RR environments, where the update process is a little shorter. The mandatory steps are the same. Back up your environment, run MDE, run post install database update. If there's nothing else to do, you're done. Of course, you have to repeat the update process for every Siebel instance. If the DR update included repository changes, you have to use the migration application to deploy the new and updated artifacts from the development environment to the runtime environment. Similar to the DR environment, you might have some administrative changes on your checklist that you need to execute before declaring the update complete. 
What if your Siebel CRM version is Innovation Pack 16 or older? Let's take a look at the path for an upgrade from a version prior to Innovation Pack 17 to the latest and greatest release. If your current Siebel CRM version is below IP17, you find yourself in the lower portion of the diagram. This means that you have to conduct an upgrade project to get to the latest Siebel release. The duration of a Siebel CRM upgrade project is measured in person months, sometimes person years. The project complexity and duration are tightly coupled to the number of customizations you have applied over the years and also to the age of your Siebel application. In a nutshell, the more time and money was spent on customizing Siebel, the more time and money will have to be spent on the upgrade. If you come from a very old Siebel release, such as Siebel 7.5, you have to execute a two-step upgrade. One-step upgrades are supported from 7.8 up to 8.2. Upgrades from these ancient releases also require a migration from the ActiveX-driven High Interactivity Client to Siebel OpenUI. If you're on a younger version, such as Innovation Pack 13 to 16, you're on the Incremental Repository Merge IRM, track, which is still a lengthy process but much more streamlined. You might not even have to migrate to OpenUI as you're already using it. Upgrade projects are conducted using an installation of latest Siebel CRM release available at the time you start the project. If you already ran a successful Siebel upgrade to IP17 or higher, you no longer have to run a lengthy, costly upgrade project. To get from a post-IP17 release to the latest available update, you only have to execute the aforementioned update process. The real benefit of Oracle's continuous release model is evident here, as the update process will at most take a few person days. Are you planning to update or upgrade to the latest Siebel release and are in need of more information on what changes you have to expect? Look no further. You're watching a monthly update summary provided by the Siebel Hub and Black Sheep IT Consulting, which is part of a playlist that provides you with detailed summaries of all continuous release updates going back to 18.7. Check the video description for a link to the playlist. If you or your team require up-to-date training for Siebel 22, be it a What's New workshop for experienced staff or foundational training for onboarding Siebel CRM developers or administrators, the Siebel Hub Learning Experience got you covered. You find a link to the Siebel Hub training page in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.